This was a very bad situation for everybody. It was like a nightmare that just didn't go away. Mourners arrived at this Florida church in 2006 where a funeral was being held for Melinda Duckett. The young mother committed suicide less than two weeks after reporting the disappearance of her son, Trenton. Hello. Hi. What is Trenton wearing, honey? I don't know. He was ready for bed. Melinda told a 911 dispatcher someone had kidnapped the two-year-old from their apartment while she was in an adjoining room. The screen covering Trenton's bedroom window had been sliced open. You don't know what you dressed him up before you went to bed? Um, he wanted to have his shoes off. All we want is, is him to be come back and safe and sound, um, as obviously quickly as possible. Nearly two decades later, the child has never been found, prompting the question, where's Trenton? On the night he disappeared, police looked all over this apartment complex here for anyone who may have witnessed the abduction. Soon, lead detective Rich Giles would arrive to begin the investigation. And I made a, a promise early on, which is really taboo for, for a police detective or a police officer to do. You, you, you never promise the family of a victim that you're going to find their child. I spoke with Giles in 2009, shortly after he retired from the Leesburg Police Department. The detective could never determine whether Trenton's bedroom window screen was cut from the inside or outside, but as this crime scene photo shows, the window pane and mini blinds are open only a few inches. Police say that opening is the same size as the slit in the window screen and is way too small for an adult to fit through. It appeared like it was a staged crime scene. Also, notice these pillows on the toddler's bed. The day after this crime scene photo was taken, detectives found one of those pillows inside a dumpster. That pillow and only that pillow off of his bed was thrown in the trash. It was thrown in the trash after the search warrant. And that's not all police found inside this very dumpster here in front of Melinda's apartment. Also in the trash, Trenton's first birthday card, a box filled with his toys, and Trenton's baby pictures, including a sonogram image. But while police were suspicious of the mother, they did not immediately rule out the boy's father, Josh Duckett, who was Melinda's estranged husband. The possibility of Joshua's abduct or Joshua's involvement is probably here on the scale, and the possibility of the outside abduction is here on the scale, and the possibility of Melinda's involvement is up higher on the scale. These stacks of records from the Florida Department of Children and Families detail a rocky relationship between Melinda and Josh Duckett. You know, neither of us had really lived life. We didn't really know what we were doing or what we were getting into. Josh and Melinda were just 19 years old when they brought Trenton home from the hospital. So we were released the day that Hurricane Charlie came through. And it was like we were released to drive home in the storm. The couple later married, but things just did not work out. They were separated throughout much of Trenton's first two years of life. Josh and Melinda each accused each other of abusing Trenton, but investigators with the Florida Department of Children and Families say they never found any physical evidence indicating that the child was being harmed. Meanwhile, custody of Trenton bounced from family member to family member. It was just a whole lot of back and forth. Unbeknownst to Josh, Melinda had reportedly been searching for a hitman. Police records released years later show the target was her husband. And it was just like, wow, this is how in-depth this whole thing is. She was trying to hire someone to kill me. After his son's disappearance, Josh Duckett voluntarily came down here to the police station to take a polygraph examination, which Leesburg police confirmed he passed. Melinda Duckett refused to take a lie detector, reportedly at the advice of her attorney. But the mother did agree to a voice stress analysis. According to police, that test indicated possible deception when Melinda was asked, did you make up the story about Trenton being taken? Could you harm your own child? No, 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 no. I spoke with Melinda three days before she committed suicide. I wanted to ask her about a very unusual post she made on the social media website, MySpace, shortly after her son's disappearance. It read, Machiavelli Vigilante. Machiavelli was a 15th century philosopher who's often associated with the concept, the ends justify the means. A vigilante is someone who takes the law into their own hands. Melinda had a different definition. Well, a Machiavellian, um, from what I had learned in school, is someone um, that, you know, pushes through, does whatever it takes to get, you know, their goals or, or dreams or anything, you know, done. 
Vigilante is someone who, just like Robin Hood, does the right over the wrong. Again, Melinda wrote that on her MySpace page after her son disappeared. But that was not the only thing baffling to detectives. They wanted to know exactly where Melinda and Trenton were in the hours leading up to his disappearance. She was not forthcoming or overly cooperative. Melinda told investigators she and the toddler spent the day driving around Central Florida in her Mitsubishi Eclipse, at one point stopping by her grandparents' house, but she claims they were not at home. Melinda says she and Trenton then traveled to the Altamont Mall in neighboring Seminole County. Police later checked mall security cameras, but could not confirm the mother and child had been there. Melinda claimed they then got lost and ended up in downtown Orlando near the former TD Waterhouse Center Arena before returning home to Leesburg. You were with him all day Saturday and all day Sunday? Right. Um, I had stopped down at family houses and stuff like that, but yes. Detectives say Melinda's story simply does not match the evidence. Witness statements, ATM records, and cell phone tower data tell a different version. According to police, Melinda Duckett was seen in a Leesburg store by herself without Trenton at 8 a.m. and then used a nearby ATM at 10.49 a.m. Cell phone pings placed the mother near Ocala, possibly around the Paddock Mall, around 12.08 p.m. It appears she then may have traveled south with her cell phone pinging near Wildwood around 12.30 and then somewhere near Mineola around 12.45. At that point, Melinda's cell phone activity goes silent for nearly three hours. Her next cell phone ping would be near Tavares at 3.42 p.m. A short time later, around 4 o'clock, a witness claims to have seen Melinda back at her Leesburg apartment, again without Trenton. Melinda told police she put Trenton to bed in his room here around 6.45. About 15 minutes later, two of Melinda's friends showed up at the apartment to watch movies. They say they never saw Trenton that night. Around 9 o'clock, one of those friends called 911 after Melinda claimed she discovered her son was missing from his room. And how long has he been gone? You don't know? Detective Giles was preparing to confront Melinda about her inconsistent stories. We took a huge copy of the timeline of all of her cell phone activity, her travels that were confirmed, and we taped it all along the wall. That's when an FBI agent's cell phone began to ring. And he became extremely, you know, distraught, upset. Um, slammed his phone down, and he goes, she killed herself. Melinda's suicide inside her grandparents' home was a major setback. But the missing child investigation was only just beginning. While many assume Trenton is dead, either intentionally or by accident, there is no proof of that. Police have never found any blood or other evidence that conclusively shows Trenton was harmed. There's nothing to indicate any sign of trauma has occurred, so nothing of that nature. And that gives Trenton's dad hope his son might still be alive. Until they can show me something else, there's nothing else to go on other than he's out there somewhere and we have to continue to push the effort to try and find him. This age-progressed photo shows what Trent might look like now as a young adult. The mystery of his disappearance has captivated the community, and it's been a source of intrigue for true crime enthusiasts. At the time Trenton vanished, social media was just in its infancy. In fact, iPhones had not yet even been invented. And we all get together on a daily basis, and we basically talk about Trenton. Where is he? Is he alive? Is he not? Next on Where's Trenton, we'll show you how armchair cyber sleuths tried to solve the mystery of the toddler's disappearance. Live at Team Trenton headquarters. As a popular TV talk show host brought the case to a nationwide audience.